Hey guys, Ben Plays here. Welcome back to more Great Ace Attorney featuring Monokuma. I'm kidding, not featuring Monokuma. Anyway, um, let's right, get right back into it. By what way, were you we're just investigating? Here. Oh yeah, by the way, my friends are still here. But I thought that Whoa. would be a given at this point. Before we started talking, you were examining Kazuma's desk, weren't you? <laughs> Red given. Kazuma. Ah, yes, the victim. Oh, wrong voice. That was... I didn't notice it being the wrong voice. Did you notice anything useful? Anything at all? I'm trying not to stray to an English accent. Observe for a moment the desktop of the victim. You'll notice there's a copious amount of junk. We see that the victim was engaged in penning some text. Which is obviously not in... Russian. Right. London Diary. Azuma was keeping notes of the trip. Ah, but... I don't think you should read his private writings. It could upset people. Tragic. And something you want to perhaps elucidate before the act of reading. Y you mean you've read it already? It is my business to know what other people do not. Yes, believe it or not, I know a smattering of Japanese. Oh, I see. Well, you're about to know what a Susato takedown is. Do it! Oh. Susato-san, aren't you going to throw the detective with one of your trademark takedowns? I'm sorry, Naruhato-san. What on earth do you mean? <laughs> Life is so unfair. He deserves it, to be honest. Any road to return to the matter at hand, namely this diary belonging to the victim. It would appear the final sentence is incomplete, as if the author were cut short. Tell me, what is the nature of this writing? Pray, be precise as the details. Oh, but I thought you knew Japanese. I know how to find the bathroom. A smattering, dear boy, a smattering. Sayonara, Bonsai, Mikado, Nado Nado. I trust you're suitably impressed. <laughs> but this diary is littered with complicated looking characters of which I can read precisely none. <laughs> so, what was all that showing off about before then? If you would be so kind to show me, I would be happy to read it to you, Mr. Sholmes. God, she's simping I'm... for him so hard. Right. I'm much obliged, my dear madam. The final entry here in Kasuma-sama's diary consists of just two short sentences. The first reads... 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. A whistling sound? Hmm. These are very deep waters. Pray, go on. The second sentence reads... 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. I see where they're going with this. A speckled band? What on earth does that mean? I have a feeling... Stop me if I'm wrong, I but I have a feeling this whole that this speckled band is very important to this case, just based on the chapter title alone. I have no idea. I've never heard that expression before. <laughs> hmm. The ventilator grill, you say? The man was presumably referring... To the lattice there upon the wall, which connects to the adjoining cabin. Yes, the adjoining cabin. <laughs> Whoa. So, hmm, I believe that I've given you enough to consider for the time being at least. Wait, are we going to court with just this? Also, is this video only going to be five minutes long? <laughs> no, I doubt that. Ah, do you have somewhere to go? 
As it happens, the victim's writings in his diary have piqued my interest. Ha. The matter warrants for an... Bleh. The matter warrants further investigation, I believe. And if I am still too long, the seasickness takes hold. That's nasty. Oh, I suppose... You're thinking of investigating the cabin next door? Which the ventilator connects to? <laughs> Great detectives are a curious breed. Our minds rebel at stagnation. We crave mental exaltation. So yes, I intend to investigate. That's... that's stakes oh. line. <laughs> Sorry? So yes, I do intend to investigate. Hence the truth will become clear soon enough. She moved, so I thought it was her. Do you think perhaps that we could go with you? <laughs> hmm. No, that would be somewhat complicated. I'm glad I'm not the only one that misreads whose that name is at the top. <laughs> what? But why? A simple glance at your wrist should reveal the answer. Oh, these. After all, you are the prime suspect in this matter, no? There's no point trying to turn it into a question. You're the one who decided I was the culprit in the first place. Whatever do you mean? I have no recollection of naming you as the, as the culprit at any point. What? 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 Do we need a what counter? It's a bit too late for a what counter, isn't it? <laughs> you must be joking. You just said it only a moment ago. Dear me, you are clearly misguided. I would have no cause to say such a thing. Well, actually, Mr. Sholmes, I did hear you say that too. You're quite sure? Well, that's very strange. Wow, you got drain damage or something? I wouldn't have said you had the face of a criminal, you know? Not really. So what were you looking at my knees before? Some great detective you are. Well, anyway, that was then and this is now. I I don't even know anymore. What do you mean? <laughs> what I mean, sir, is this. <coughs> if you are the culprit, then you must play the part more convincingly. Roll over and accept your fate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now he's just being plain rude. Oh boy. And off he goes, having just laughed in my face. His sense of humor is as twisted as his name. <laughs> yeah, it's like an anagram. Oh boy. Naruhara-san, what are you just standing there for? Huh? We must go and investigate the cabin next door as well. Aren't you forgetting something? What about these? There's no way I can- Hiya! After Kazuma-sama spent his dying moments struggling to leave us a clue, you're willing to give up? I reiterate, my kind of lady. You're just gonna roll over and accept your fate? Uh, as if you gave me any choice in the rolling over part. <laughs> I think we still have some investigation to finish off in here first, don't we? Let's carry on examining what we can in this cabin while we wait for a chance to slip next door. Alright. Good idea. The situation doesn't look good for me, but there are still things I can do to help myself. Is it gonna turn into an every case thing we have to defend ourselves? Cause I'd get that sick of boring. that quick. And I owe it to Kazuma to do everything I can to do everything I can to find a way out of this and bring the real culprit to justice. Is that? Oh no. What? Is something wrong, Naruhara-san? Oh, no. It's just that crewman standing by the door. I can't help feeling like I've seen him somewhere before. Which one? Mm, same. 
Oh, yes, you're right. He does look familiar. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Wait a sec. Hang on. Do you want that? Yes, what can I do for uh... you? Oh what? my god. <laughs> 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 I recognize that face, but it can't be. He's all yours. <laughs> it is! Me, it's my tuberculosis. I didn't know you were here, Inspector Hosanaga. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay, maybe they'll finally change the name to Hosanaga. Then yeah, there we go. Ah, hello again. What are you doing here? I took the liberty of staying away because I knew you people would get in trouble again. I think that that should be my line. I was so stunned when I saw you, my heart stopped. <laughs> yes. Nearly stopped, I hope. Oh, no, no, no. If I die, it's gonna be to this tuberculosis. I received some special orders to go undercover as a member of the crew and board his ship. Yes. <laughs> Again? You certainly seem to enjoy undercover work, Inspector. <clears throat> if there's anything I can do to help you, please ask and I'll take the liberty of doing it. I never expected to see this man on board. But perhaps his presence can help me out of this hopeless situation. Alright. Yeah, when I said, oh no, that, 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 that's what I meant. I... I recognized his stance, his his whole stance. I thought it was him, and sure enough, yes, here here he is. Special orders. So, what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? <clears throat> I've taken the liberty of adding some dots here. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> this is all my fault. I take full responsibility. Hmm. For what? My orders were to act as a Sogi-san's bodyguard. And I uh... It was the Minister of Ju <clears throat> It was Minister of Justice Hell who pushed for this overseas study tour to go ahead. Jigoku. Yeah, that means hell. Ah. And he entrusted me with assuring that Asogi-san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Assassinated? How could that have even- <laughs> Hang on. How is that a thing?! But these are complicated times. Hang on, we both missed lines. Between our greatest names. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm not- Okay, this is a- this is a train wreck. Alright. One second. I love that movie. Assassinated? H how could that have even been a possibility? I'm not sure. But these are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Imagine if we didn't have that history tab. Minister Jigoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. Yeah. This is incredible. I, I don't believe it. Kazuma-sama was... assassinated? Obviously, we couldn't give Sogi-san a visible security escort. So how about train an escort to... do security? Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. <coughs> I see. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been on board, from morning until night, every day. But I never imagined it would happen here, inside his own cabin. Not here, on the first class deck. This is coach stuff! I failed miserably at my assignment, and Asogi-san is dead as a result. I'm a disgrace! All I can do is take the liberty of humbly apologizing. Inspector. So if there's anything at all I can do to help now, just say the word. 
tell me he's not dead. We're doing what we can to investigate Kazuma's death ourselves. I thought you might be. You didn't do it, did you? You're not the killer. Of course not! We'd really like to investigate the cabin next door. Yes, so we need to be allowed out of this cabin. I'm sorry. What? You've been deemed a risk to the ship's safety. If you moved to even touch the handle of the cabin door. That stormy looking seaman there would surely snap your neck in two. Ow. I suppose I'm not just a stowaway now. They think I'm a murderer as well. Again. Hmm. Would it be possible... ...to give me something to work with, do you think? I'm going to need something persuasive, perhaps a large bottle of vodka. What do you mean? Oh, wait. That's Usato. What do you mean? If I had a solid reason why the next door cabin should be investigated, for example, I'd do everything I could to persuade the captain to allow it, really. I'd lay my life on the line if I had to. But I don't see how... There may be a way. What? Really? Think of how you tried to persuade me of your innocence, Naruhato-san. By presenting me with a piece of evidence that you already had in your possession. Evidence? What's that? It's just the same as when you are in court. You must have done it many times during your trial. <laughs> Simply select the present panel. And choose some evidence that Inspector Hosanaga could use. I knew that. So, evidence that would give us a viable reason to investigate the next door cabin, is it? Alright, yes. I think I might know what we can use. So, basic ace attorney stuff. Yeah, let's see if I can present the detective with the evidence he needs to persuade the captain. Okay, back. And present. This is probably it, right? Yeah. Yep. That mentions the ventilator grill. Oh? What is that? It's Kazuma's diary. Just before he died, Kazuma sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Strange? In what way? He wrote. What looks like some kind of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. <clears throat> A speckled band? Mm, that is strange. Almost as though we're entitled to an old Sherlock Holmes story. Yes, we're still trying to work out what he meant by that, but what I'd like to know is... But don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? You're very astute, Inspector. <sighs> ah, that ventilator clearly joins to the next door cabin. <laughs> That's right, so if we can investigate in there, we might be able to work out what the speckled band was. Hmm, dot 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 dot. All right then. Hmm. I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain is giving me strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see. We have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? So you're willing to do that? Yes, of course. As long as you don't leave the first class cabin area, I'm afraid I can't remove those handcuffs, though. But what about the captain? Aren't you going against his direct orders? I am a man of my word. 
But I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. Provided oh that my I don't God. What the if... tuberculosis. <laughs> After all, I failed to keep Asogi's on safe. This is the least I can do. Thank you. What if what? Let's seize the moment then, Narahara san. It's honestly a kind of stupid thought. Just select move and we can leave this cabin at last. Move. Alright, let's see what we can find out. Movement, huh? Back. Move. First class passageway. Ninth of January, 7.48 a.m. SS Beria, first class cabin passageway. Is that a mouse trap? Looks like it. Whew, I'm finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be, and this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Kazuma-sama was being sent on this study tour by the government. That's why he was being put up in a first-class cabin. <coughs> Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. Really? That must be awful. Oh, look over there. That's another crewman keeping watch, and he looks enormous, even if he is sitting down. What an absolute unit. The door next to him leads to the second class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here who shouldn't. I suppose. Like people in handcuffs? Naruhata-san, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to the ship by now. We've been at sea for two weeks already. Well, yes, I know, but the thing is... I was inside Kazuma's trunk when I first came aboard, and ever since then I've been shut up inside that little wardrobe. It must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. Um... Ah. Alright. Yeah, I have to select the door. I guess you have to talk to the Russian bear. Um, excuse me, but can I ask you something? You? You little stowaway murderer. That wasn't a good start, was it? Alright, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something for of you? You? You little third-class lady's maid. Oof, rude. Uh, oh. I apologize for my awful Russian accent. We seem to have caught the sailor on a bad day, Susato-san. I am not no sailor. My mother gave me name. All of these sailors are gonna have... Of course. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, I am senior crewman, Beef Stroganoff. <laughs> wow, the best thing is just to avoid eye contact. I think. <laughs> well, we all know what that one is. <laughs> First class cabin era. <laughs> um, Miss Mr. Stroganov, about this first class cabin area. <laughs> Here we are in ver in finest part of Buryash steamship for very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret, many important persons. Da. There is a secret. Why are you telling us? That is why I am always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean, but Stroganoff is not animal. Sure, Thank you. Made a beef. If I may, I was wondering. 
Is the cabin next to Mr. Asogi's currently occupied? Da. Da, maybe? Alright, yeah, I don't know. Um, Sisato-san, did you understand that? It sounded like... Da. Okay, I guess it... I think it's possibly Russian for yes? Or no? <laughs> Genius. <laughs> It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Well, it sounds like there is somebody in the next door cabin, at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Passenger in the next door cabin. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Asogi's? His name is Mr. Grime... Grimesby Roylot. He is very important western gentleman. Shame on you, game. Shame on you. <laughs> what? A western gentleman? I do... Yeah. Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roylot is an authentic western gentleman. Western means like Japan, right? No, Western would... Uh, Western like, would be European. But aren't they currently in Europe? He's Russian, so to the west of him would be England. Oh, okay. Such a man would have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East lands. That was harsh. Would you tell us when Mr. Roylock came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now and I've been in Kazuma's cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin, or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, he must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. You have no business here. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganoff? Da, all time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? I don't know what that means. Um, Susato-san, um, did you understand that? It was clearly a no. So that was yet. I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. And you didn't hear any strange noises or sense anything was wrong in some way? I said no! Sorry! I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there. This is enough. I cannot say more now. Oh. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to cabin. Yes, alright. Bulkhead to second class area is staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or as English say, when the pigs fly. Yes, I understand. Good, now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Okay. Alright. Hurrah! That book on top of the table there really is huge. There's a pen with it, too. Yes, I'm sure that the ship's log. Shall we have a look through it? That was my line, but you can have it. Oh, okay. The writing is so neat and precise. 
Every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. Hmm, you wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. Hmm. Anyway, look here. Last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there was nothing to report. I hope this is over soon-ish, because I, like, I don't know. This looks like a plan of the SS Beria. It shows each deck. Look. The Beria is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skinned hull. What a marvel of engineering. Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but... How is it that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhara-san. It is? Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. The islands of Japan? Yes, they're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than this ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. Well, I suppose so. Oh That's... my god, she's as dense as the detective. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the Japanese one. <laughs> oh, brother. <sighs> I keep hitting the court record button by accident. Sorry, it's because I'm trying to do this with my left my right hand. Maybe I should do it with my left hand. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Mm. That's the way to the second class area of the ship. Is something wrong? I was thinking about making a run for it, just for a moment. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but I imagine the moment you reach for the handle of the door... ...that burly seaman would surely shoot you dead. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Perhaps I went a little too far there. No, I started it with my talk of running away. And there's no way I could run away while Kazuma's death remains a mystery anyway. Okay, well, I just wanted to see... Alright, uh, the B button. Or the B key. Um, alright. Fire alarm? Looks like... And a mouse trap. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. No answer. Who is it? There's no answer. Who is it? They're not saying anything. <laughs> We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. I've investigated thoroughly, but I can't find anything out of place. Really? You can't? There we go. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? Pleasing shape? What? What? What is pleasing about that shape? I don't know. Uh, looks like a certain body part, I guess. It's the emergency Steak! alarm. <laughs> It's probably best not to touch it. <gasps> oh, an alarm. It says, press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this is what I have to see. What are you doing, Naruhara-san? You mustn't touch it! <laughs> but this is an emergency situation! Just look at these handcuffs! You know full well that's not what the alarm is for! 
If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. <laughs> I wish everything would just stop. This ship included. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream! It must have been a woman! Stand aside! I am about to break the door down! <clears throat> Mr. Jones! I had a frog in my throat, the afraid I was about to croak. I shan't be stopped. When the pit is on me, I revel in kicking doors off their hinges. Please, wait, Mr. Jones! The door doesn't appear to be bolted! It doesn't? Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What prey can I kick? Yourself! Hmm, <laughs> I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. Nope. 9th of January, SS Beria, first class cabin. Number two. What?! You get this one, Steak. He's Russian, I believe. Okay. Who... who are you? A Western gentleman? This man looks Russian to me. We heard a woman scream. A woman? Don't be absurd, comrade. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. True, this old man does appear to be the only person in here. But in that case, who just screamed? Get out, all of you, now, before I chop you and make you into Porsche. Please excuse the intrusion, but you're Mr. Grimsby Roylott, I believe. Yes, that is me, and you are? I am the one and only, the actual Herlock Shows. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am a great detective amongst great detectives. One who adorns the cover of popular magazines, no less. We have yet to see you do Including. anything. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. The man uses that magazine like a business card. A detective? Hmm. I do not trust detectives because I am an obvious villain. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't be appeared to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So might I be so bold as to ask you to open that small traveling case? What? Don't be stupid, comrade! How could anyone feed in a small trunk like that? You'd be surprised. Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk? Don't look at me. What? Oh my! Did did you see that, Mr. Narahato? She's back to calling him Mr. Yes, the case just shook. Leave, now. Otherwise, I'll call the steward of Gondor. So this is Kazuma's neighbor, Mr. Grimesby Roylott. There's no doubt about it, this strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. I'm not talking to you. What are you- Um, do you have a moment please, Mr. Sholmes? <clears throat> you need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, um, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? <laughs> Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed. I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Which is apparently now. 
Roll! And we've seen the hour is upon us now. The time has come, not a moment to lose. Am I mistaken? Well, um, no, actually, you're spot on for once. Wait, what? Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylott, is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Uh, you call the KGB on him. Veritasero. Why? The truth, of course. Although it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Yes, expose him. No, so I choose yes, to expose please. myself. Please! Oh yes, please! Well then, you what you are about to see may as well. Down. Why do you guys keep <laughs> talking over each other? What were you saying, Golden? Sorry. You can almost see her bouncing up and down in excitement. Ah. Agreed. Well then, what you are about to see may well astound you. <laughs> For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to this case. The word great in his sentences is like... Francisca von Karma with the word fool. <laughs> Could this man be a more hackney portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? He's crazy. From time to time, it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or Russian on account of his dubiousness? <laughs> that last one doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you, or anyone. That's right. And Mr. Sholmes? I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read... It is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh. I must have complete silence. <laughs> what what are you doing, comrade? Why are you peering into my face like that? You hitting on me? What? Ah, just as I thought. Yes. I have quite made up my mind. Hmm. There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylott, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. But what do you mean, comrade? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shares, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. What, your beard? Are you not? Huh! And number two, the other conclusion that I've drawn. You are, at this very moment, no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you've been discovered. Does it not? Ugh! Oh, no, hello, son. I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Shulton's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction. Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. <sighs> In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. 
watch it be one of those things when it's only when he's under my control that he's actually smart, and when he's on his own, he's just a complete dumbass. <laughs> what? What ineffable twaddle. Wait, what, what ineffable twaddle? Ineffable twaddle. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Harlock Jones. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. If this guy's a great detective, then I'm Manderville. <laughs> this is like a dream come true! I can hardly believe it, but all the color has drained from Mr. Roylott's face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Sholm's conclusions were right. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such things, you wish to say? Elementary, my dear dummy. Curling so hard. Very well, then. I shall elucidate. You're doing what so hard? She's fangirling so oh, hard. Oh, she is, yes. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Alamod! Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. Yeah, what? It's a great deduction, Charlie Brown. Oh, dear God. So. The dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylott, obviously. What catches the eye in the first place? Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand? He's genocide jack. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us right in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. Now moving on. <laughs> the question that the question then begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beer, Mr. Roloff? Once again the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Gah! Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular, the fascinating front page article. Which, it would appear, you have also read, Mr. Roylott. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. Facial structure is way off. In translation, the headline reads, Revolutionary Villain Bolshevik Leads Russia Via Shanghai. Oh, well, eh. That's quite a tongue twister. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard. And a completely different mustache. And nose. Oh, my freaking God. Is he going to start saying that this guy is now the... Yes, he is, Golden, and I, to be honest, thought he was right until they pulled up the article. Then I realized that, no, he is wrong. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the Russian revolutionary himself. Villain Bolshevik. Can I just slam my head into my desk now? <laughs> oh, like Ellie say. <sighs> Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. <sighs> and now. As for my second conclusion, you are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. Yeah! And the proof of this crime? Over there. Oh yes, Mr. Roylott. 
taken unawares. People have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Ah! And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. Mm-hmm. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No! No! I refuse! In Russia, case open you! What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation... A young lady, perhaps. <laughs> one slight enough to fit therein. She had to be a freaking hobbit! But don't be absurd! Even my babushka's not that short! And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me... <laughs> we are not well suited to a lot of crime, are we? You careless coup d'oil betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to the answer. Yes. The reason you refuse to open your traveling case can be equally found in the pages of this newspaper. Or there is another most stimulating article. We never look back of the newspaper. Yes. If we turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Oh, there's always fun stuff on the back page. Oh, who that? Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. That you've kidnapped a ballerina? Your crime is that of abduction! Well, I mean, she does have to do abduction to do her... to do her dancing. Okay. And also I was gonna make another joke. And your... and your crime, Sholmes, is that of bad deduction. That too. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. A rather normal sounding name for one. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma, Elementsky. Okay. In Soviet Russia, you deduce Holmes. Susato-san, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? We'll see you guys in the next episode. Okay. Bye. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. If you like my content and you'd like to support me, have a look at my Patreon page, where you can get rewards like joining my Discord server, requesting my next LP, and even guest commentating an episode. Link is in the description down below.